Thanks for coming out, guys. Um, yeah, it's been a kind of a tough 45 or so hours since the game. Uh, but as I said Saturday, I'll say it again, that was unacceptable. Our performance, my coaching, and uh, really tried to look at everything possibly could all the way till about midnight last night and then moved on to UCLA. So um, what basically the findings are is there's no one major thing. It's a bunch of little things. Um, details of execution, details of coaching. And um, when you have a lot of change like we have in the last three weeks, you really got to double down on the details to make sure that everybody's on the same page, everybody's doing things with the same um, precision. And we did not do a good job, and I did not do a good enough job of guaranteeing that happened. So you add it up, and that's that's what happened. Every game takes on a life of its own. We certainly had our opportunities uh, all the way up to the very end of the first half. I mean, there's opportunity to make it a one-score game going into halftime, and uh, just were not able to do that. So we we uh, we let the game get away from us, and, and t you know Wisconsin did a great job. So I'll answer a question or two to clarify that, and then um, and then I'm going to move on to uh, to UCLA. So. Um, guys, go ahead. I guess just starting offensively, you mentioned the details and the ex execution. I guess what's your level of confidence that this can be corrected to the level that it needs to be going forward, starting with this UCLA game? Yeah, we got a great group of players here. They're really uh, steadfastly committed to what we're doing. Yesterday was a very uh, humbling yet sobering experience together. Uh, we talked through it all as a team, as a staff. And we went out and had a good practice. And uh, our guys will be ready to go. And we'll have a great week of practice. And homecoming uh, will be a, a, it'll be a great opportunity to go out there and play in front of a great crowd, one that deserves better than we gave them. And that's that's our goal as a group, is to go and be 1-0 at the end of this UCLA season and get back on track. So uh, yeah, I'm very confident that we can do that. But there's a very good team on the other side. Uh, and it, you, know, you can be fooled by the record. Don't be. When you look, they've played a very, very competitive schedule a really, really tough schedule, and have played and been competitive in each of the games. So again, games games kind of take on a life of their own, but uh, they've kind of seemed to find themselves as well. It's a new staff. Um, you know, they've kind of made some adjustments from the early season now, and uh, are playing are playing well. So we'll have our hands full. We have uh, certainly we're we're banged up. You know, we've lost a couple more and. Uh, get into that stuff on Saturday with the availability report, but uh, it'll it'll be a it'll be a challenge. Yeah, uh, you said you know UCLA has kind of found itself defensively. Rutgers played its best game in the second half against Nebraska, and then to see that kind of unwind last week, what what was the biggest takeaway from you? I, I know you said execution and little details, but was there anything schematically or setbacks defensively that just didn't go your way? Anything big picture there? No, there was very little that was done that we weren't, you know, prepared for, knew was coming. We we um, we didn't coach them well enough, obviously, because they didn't execute the details the way we needed them executed. You know, there wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I haven't seen that, or that's a worry. You know, there are things that we, we've defended before. And even within the game, you know, defended it one time and didn't defend it the next, which is, you know, probably the most frustrating thing. Sometimes it's different people doing it or not doing it. Um, but no, no, I think uh, we'll get back on track. We will. Did any of the six guys that, the two guys that didn't play, Tyree and Robert, and the four guys that left, Aaron, Sam, Kenny, and Flip, are any of those guys out for the season? We're, we're evaluating everything right now with medical. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not in a great spot with, with our health right now, but that doesn't matter. We need to make sure that whoever takes the field, the 11 guys who take the field at a time, are prepared and ready to play their very best. If they do that, that's all you can do. We didn't do that Saturday. And again, I'll, I'll squarely take that on my shoulder. It's my job to get them to be in a position to do the very best they can. Now, if that's not good enough for the team we're playing, that's life, right? But uh, when you don't do that, you don't give yourself a chance, that's, that's not acceptable. You don't know if any of those six guys are out for the year? I'm going to get into all that on the, uh, on the availability report on Saturday.
there were some obviously some drops the other day and, and at times this season I guess how concerning has that been and how just frustrating has that been as it kind of stalls out the offense at times at inopportune opportunity? yeah it definitely stalls out the offense right there's a there's a saying in football on defense you know when you when you have a, a stop on third down you don't have to live to see everything that happens and on offense when you get stopped on third down you don't get to live out everything that happens and, uh, you know, we did some of those that, you know, would have been easy, clear first downs and didn't, didn't execute, didn't make the play. Again, why? You know, some of it, you know, if a ball's slightly off or a receiver doesn't, you know, is that coaching? Some of it is, yeah. Some of it is we have to get them more comfortable uh, protection-wise. Everybody, it all fits together. Protection fits with quarterback, fits with running backs, fits with coverage, fits with receivers. And uh, we just need to do a better job coaching it. During the bye week, Kirk Shiraka spoke about finding balance, and he liked the fact that there was some balance on the offense. The last couple of weeks, it's been a little bit more heavy in the past. Do you like where the balance is at right now, or do you think you need to get back to maybe some of what was working well in the beginning of the year? Again, the game takes on a life of its own, so sometimes that balance get thrown, gets thrown out of whack. You know, when you go down 28 uh, there's just not enough series left in the game to keep running the ball play after play. It, it drains the clock. So I think those numbers are a little misleading, but uh, certainly the game dictates that a little bit. We need, to, we need to be able to convert on third down, and that's how you keep giving opportunities to run the ball, to ham and egg it, play action, all those things. Uh, but again, when things go the way they did Saturday, you can take all the balance and all those equations and throw them out the window. Uh, because at the end of the day, you have to try to do whatever you can to win the game. Certainly what we did until we knew the game was out of reach, and then we tried to get out of there healthy, as healthy as we could. Uh, Coach, just on your run defense, last few weeks, run defense has had a hard time stopping opponents. Um, where do you see, as far as reviewing the tape, you can improve upon that, obviously, certainly not just the big plays, but also just you know short yardage situations to try to get off the field quicker? Yeah, I think it's mostly technique oriented. I wouldn't even say it's assignment. There was a couple assignment errors, but I would say technique. Um, again, every time you say there's a technique issue, there is a guy on the other side that's trying to do an opposite technique. So I don't ever want to take credit away from our opponent because they did a heck of a job. But we didn't do well te technically uh, as we have in the past and as, as we're capable of doing. So that's why I bring it back to us, to the coaches, to me. We got to get them to do what they're technically capable of doing. Follow up on that, just granularly. You guys have gave up. You guys gave up five plays of thirty plus yards against Wisconsin, seventeen on the season through six games. Why do you think that that is occurring and occurring you know regularly? Well, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think there's there's tech. I mean, if it's busts, that's a different thing. If you're busting, you're not doing the job. You know, you don't know what job to do. That's a different story. It's not that, but it is details. Um, it is execution of fundamentals that we have to coach better and we have to we have to make sure that we get them on game day. Do the players have to do it? Sure they do. You can't do it for them, but we have to do a better job of of being detailed in our teaching, better teaching, hold them more accountable, all those things that is coaching. And when it doesn't happen, you can you can point to everybody else, but you better look in the mirror and say this is what we got to do. A uh, core tenant in this program is staying in the moment, in the present, looking a little bit big picture. Is there a difference in managing that when things are going well, you win your first four games versus when they're not, you know, losing your last two? Well, the beauty of our our uh, culture here, CHOP, is, you know, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's down the middle, which most of life is down the middle, you got to stay focused and you got to stay on that spot and keep chopping away. And it's, uh, I know people say, oh, well, that's corny. Well, it might be corny or whatever you think it is. To us, it's not. To us, it's a way of life, and that's what we need to do more than ever right now. And um, I'm very confident our players will do that. We have a great uh, connection on this team. They're very, very disappointed in what happened. You know, I asked many, many players, what do you think? And it is different answers. Um, but at the end of the day, we know what we have to do. And, we're going to make the corrections, and we're going to work hard this week to get all those corrections in place. Um, and then we have a team that we're playing. Like, you look at them, they're very talented. Uh, offensively, the quarterback, you know, gunslinger. He can throw well on the run. He can throw from the pocket. He's, uh, they got a, a depth at running back. They got three returning starters on the O-line. They got a very big, long, athletic tight end, big receiving core. Um, defensively, they're huge. 
up front. They're very stout. Linebackers, 49 and 20, are really, really active, really playmakers, playing behind a very big, strong D-line, which uh, is going to be a huge challenge for us. And I think the secondary is, is gifted as well. So, uh, I, I, like I said, I think they're finding their, their, their identity as a team, and they're playing really well. Uh, so it's going to be a huge challenge for us. So we have to. We have to get back to work. We need to get it fixed. And we have to be really detailed and play with great effort. Details and effort, 99% of the game. And uh, we didn't do it well enough. Coming off a loss like that, do you consider changes in playing time and snap counts, guys, guys who play, and specifically a wide receiver with five drops, any changes in rotation? Right everything. Now? When you when you come off a game like that, if you don't look at everything, you're being foolish. So we look at everything. It doesn't mean you change just to change, though. That would be the biggest mistake that you could make, right? Um, sometimes you look at a play and you start saying, well, maybe we should do this or maybe we should do that. It's, Whoa, timeout, guys. You're going to change what we do based on a mistake or a poor play of technique that someone did? No, there's a reason we do it that way. Don't change what we do. Get the young man to do it the way that we originally thought he is the right way, because that is the right way, and we just have to do it better. Uh, it's worked for a lot of years around here. It's worked in several different venues, it ha different schools, different programs. You have to demand that. You have to teach it well enough. Then you have to demand it, and that's where you got to be careful. You can't start because when you start moving all the pieces, now it's now it's uh, now it's out of control. We just have to, you know, if there's a reason to make a change, we'll make it, and if not, we just have to play better, coach better, do everything better. What was the response you saw from Ethan in the locker room on Saturday, but then also yesterday? Yeah, Ethan's a competitor. He he'll be back. You know, uh, I don't think he was very far off. I thought his decision making was very good. Um, maybe a little accuracy issues, some, you know, all that stuff kind of fits together. Right? Uh, protection, receiving, quarterback play. We're, we're, we're a little bit off there. We'll get that back in, in, in line and go out and have a good performance. That's the best performance we can have. That's what, that's what our goal is. Let's go out and play the best we can and see where the – where the chips fall, and, and that's our goal. And then we'll get back to work this week. We'll get that done. So appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you.